eclipses in less than a year. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, outreach astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. Hey, James. How does the man in the moon cut his hair? I'm afraid to ask. How? Eclipse it. Oh, brother. Uh, this isn't going to be an astronomy joke episode, is it? No, but that's not a bad idea. Instead, we're going to preview the upcoming total lunar eclipse. Ah, uh, yes, and this will be the third total lunar eclipse in the past year. April 15th, 2014, October 8th, 2014, and the next one is this year on April 4th. And this one will be number three in a series of four called a tetrad. All right, let's show you. Okay, we have our skies set to 4 a.m. on March 30th, five days before the eclipse, facing west. There you'll see the waxing gibbous moon setting next to a really bright star. But that's no star. It's the king of the planets, Jupiter. You've probably been seeing Jupiter lighting up the evening skies as it rises in the east. When you get up early, and I mean really early, like 4 a.m., you can see him over in the west. Let's watch the sky day after day and see how the moon shifts across the background stars. The moon will be here on March 31st at 4 a.m., getting closer to Leo the Lion's main star Regulus. Then the moon seems to hop over here by April 1st. Notice it's getting fuller. A lunar eclipse can only happen during a full moon. So on April 2nd and 3rd, it gets fuller still. And on the morning of Saturday, April 4th, the eclipse is ready to begin. So the good news is that this eclipse will be on a Saturday. All right, the weekend. The bad news, for Dean here especially, is that it won't start until 6.15 a.m. Oh no, another early morning eclipse? <laughs> Sorry, Night Owl. But there's more bad news. Where you live is a factor. Let's watch the eclipse simultaneously from Cincinnati, Ohio and Miami, Florida. As more and more of the Earth's shadow creeps across the face of the moon, the lower in the sky it gets. And at 7.11 a.m. in Miami and 7.22 a.m. in Cincinnati, the moon will set before the total eclipse. Bummer. That means we'll need to travel west to see more. Let's fly. To see totality, when the entire moon is in the darkest shadow of the Earth, you'll have to live west of the Great Plains. I'll watch from Denver, Colorado, while I'll watch the action from Los Angeles, California. For both of us, the eclipse begins at almost the exact same time, 4.15 Mountain Time for James in Denver, which is 3.15 Pacific Time in LA. At 5.57 a.m., folks around Denver will see the moon turn an eerie shade of red as the setting moon reaches totality. While viewers in California see it begin at 4.57 a.m. Totality will last just a few minutes, and then the Earth's shadow will begin to wipe away from the moon. A few minutes later, in Denver, the show will end when the moon sets still in eclipse. While in LA, we'll see a little more of the eclipse until almost the last bit of shadow has left the moon. So the farther west you live, the more of the eclipse you will see. 2014 had two lunar eclipses, and so will 2015. This is called a tetrad, four lunar eclipses in two years. And the first three are only seen in early morning. Why do they always have to be in the morning? Dean's not a morning person. Well, good news, the fourth eclipse is on September 27th. It'll be visible in the evening. Finally. And even better, it'll be on the same night of the closest, largest full moon of the year. The supermoon. Wow, a supermoon eclipse on a Sunday evening. I can't wait. So set your alarms for the total lunar eclipse happening on the morning of Saturday, April 4th. Remember, where you live will determine your view. So to find out what the eclipse will look like from your city, go to our website, www.stargazersonline.org. You know, we really do need to do a moon joke episode. As long as you don't tell the haircut joke again. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. up.